Baptiste home site. If there was one leader of the Underground Railroad in Detroit, there wasn't. But if there was, it's George the Baptiste. Or you could argue William Lambert and him are about equal. But George the Baptiste and William Lambert, and we're at the George the Baptiste home site. He was at that meeting when, when Frederick Douglass and John Brown met. And his idea was, yeah, John Brown, I hear what you're saying, but let's go down south and blow up institutions that are run by these slave owners. That's what we need to do. So he was going to buy a lot of gunpowder, and they were supposed to go down south secretly and blow up white churches, white slave owner, big houses, plantation, uh, plantation homes. That was the plan that he had. Of course, you know, everybody didn't buy into that plan, but that was his plan. So he was a longtime Mason and one of Detroit's most active and impassioned black community leaders. He lived here during the 1850s and 60s. He was born in Virginia about 1815. He moved to Massa, Indiana, and became involved in the Underground Railroad. They put a hit out on him. The slave owners were going to kill him because he was such an abolitionist. They put a hit out on him. He had to leave and come to Detroit. Now, was he French or? The Baptiste is not French, no. He's a black man. He's not French. Um, where did he get that name, name? Yeah, where he get that name his from? His name, no doubt, comes from one of his ancestors who probably was enslaved by a Frenchman. So he himself was not, but no doubt one of his ancestors may probably was. Um, so he accompanied. He went to the White House. He worked in the White House. After working in the White House, he came to Detroit. Had several successful businesses. He was a delegate to the Cleveland National Convention of Colored Citizens. He was an agent for the Freedmen's Aid Commission. During the Civil War, he was organizing Michigan's Colored Regiment. He died in 1875. His house was right here. And he also, if you made it to his house on the Underground Railroad, this was your last spot. He had his own boat called the T. Whitney. And he also had a paid oarsman who would oar you over to Canada. Cadillac Survival, 2001, they, this monument was dedicated. It was sculpted by Ed Dwight, who had been an astronaut. He was a black man who was an astronaut. But because of the racism in the NASA program, he, um, he left and left NASA and began to do what he really loved, which was sculpting. So Ed Dwight has done a number of sculptures dealing with the Underground Railroad and slavery. The first one he did is in Battle Creek, Michigan. They have an Underground Railroad monument sitting right next to the Kellogg Foundation in the old William K. Kellogg, W.K. Kellogg House. There's a monument there. It looks very similar to this one, but it's an Underground Railroad monument because Battle Creek was an important station on the Underground Railroad. So he does this one. This one's get dedicated in 2001. And it's a family. So you got the uh, granddad, you got the children here, grandma's over there, mama's here, there's the dad right there, and I think it's, she got she has another kid for her. And then who's pointing over to freedom? That's George the Baptiste. So we already went to his home site. He was the, if you made the George the Baptiste, that's your last spot before you on your way to, to Canada. Because he had a, a boat called the T. Whitney, he had a paid oarsman who would row you over to Canada to freedom. That's George the Baptiste pointing the way to freedom. Let's go around to the front and see. Lanterns are thought by some historians to be symbols for the Underground Railroad. So lanterns would be hung outside of windows. At least some historians are, uh, uh, they're not sure, but they're alleging that that may have been a possibility. That lanterns would be hung outside of windows to let people know that this house is a safe house, a station on the Underground Railroad. And in some cases, people had said, some people are alleged that quilting, African-American quilts were hung out to let people know. So there are uh, all kinds of uh, uh, allegations. We're not sure if they are true or not, but um, this monument points to some of them. So some of the symbols you see on there are symbols that have been found on many of the quilts, African-American quilts in the 1830s, 40s, and 50s. Uh, and then, of course, the lantern here. So this is called the Gateway to Freedom Exhibit. Um, we know that Detroit was an important station on the Underground Railroad. Its, it's um, code name was Midnight because you almost have freedom, almost at daybreak. Freedom is daybreak. You're almost there. So its code name was Midnight. 
and find D stay on the drunken path and follow the stars. So sounds like nonsense. But basically what it's saying is no, find D stay on the drunken path and follow the stars means you can't stay long here in Detroit. Slave catchers are around. You need to go to Canada. Because the slave catchers around. So you gotta stay on the path and follow the stars. The stars is north. North Star, you're going north. Which, it, sadly, I mean, not sadly, but ironically, Canada's actually south of Detroit. But, <laughs> oh, excuse me, you good. And then, the monkey wrench turns the wagon wheel toward Canada on the Bear Paw Trail. And so you would say that, um, that's another statement basically saying you need to make it to Canada. Detroit is not safe right now. The monkey wrench turns the wagon Monkey wrench turns the wagon wheel toward Canada on the Bear Paw Trail. Yeah. So it sounds like nonsense. Are you saying that nobody would think, nobody would know what, what the heck you're talking about? These are some of the people that's important. Let's talk about some of these people. So you got Reverend Webb W. O. Anderson, Reverend S. D. Mary, Henry Bibb, who lived in Canada. This um, black man who would help black people who escaped from Detroit and made it to Canada, helped them organized in Canada their own self-sufficient communities also had a abolitionist newspaper um, so that's Henry Bibb, Reverend Anthony Binger Jr., Reverend Anthony Binger Sr., Thornton and Ruthie Blackburn. Ruthie changes her name after she's free to Lucy Blackburn. She didn't want to keep that slave name so she changed her name to Lucy Blackburn. John Brown, we know he came to Detroit. John M. Brown, who I don't know. Reverend Supply Chase, Shoebell Conant, where Conant Gardens come from and the street Conant comes from, he was a Detroit alderman who was an abolitionist, a white man who was an abolitionist, and refused to set up a racial restrictive covenant for his land that he owned, which means he, didn't, he black people could live there. So that was one little small area of Detroit, outside of Black Bottom, that black people could live because he was brought Conant Gardens. That's how Conant Gardens became a place, that's right. Shoebell Conant. Uh, Captain Thomas Ch Chilver, Reverend Charles Davey, Reverend Samuel Davis, George the Baptiste, we know him, Alexander Duncan, Joseph Ferguson, Seymour Finney, we know his bond, yeah. Reverend Foote, Mr. and Mrs. George French, we know Mrs. George French's real name is Caroline. She was one of the leaders of the freedom of Thornton and Ruthie Blackburn, the uprising in 1833. Um, Daddy Grace, Shields Green, Horace Havilah, Patlock, Laura Haviland. Miss Laura Haviland was in Adrian, Michigan based. And she started the first integrated school in Michigan. She started out as being a Quaker, but the Quakers were pacifists and she couldn't deal with that. Her work on the Underground Railroad, she believed she had to be armed. So she left the Quaker church. Erastus Hussey ran the Underground Railroad spot in Battle Creek, Michigan, where the other monument is. Um, that's Erastus Hussey and his wife, Sarah. Reverend William King, Mr. and Mrs. William Lambert. I told you about William Lambert. Um, his wife was, William Lambert's wife was George French's daughter. Okay, so Caroline and George French had a daughter that was married to William Lambert. Um, Reverend Lent, Abram Lewis, Mr. and Mrs. Madison Lightfoot. We know Mrs. Madison Lightfoot. Her name is Tabitha. She went with Caroline French to visit Ruthie Blackburn and walked out with her. Um, Charles Monroe, that was the minister, the first minister at Second Baptist Church. Sleepy Polly drove the, the wagon. He was the person that John Cook paid for to drive the wagon to take Thornton and Ruthie Blackburn to the river. That's who that is, Sleepy Polly. Reverend William Troy, William Webb, Thorn, um, Frederick Douglass, and John Brown met at William Webb's house, Benjamin Willoughby. That first meeting of the 13 people was at Benjamin Willoughby's house. All right? So, George French home was the site. George French's home was the site of Second Baptist Church organizational meeting. That's Caroline French in George French's house. Second Baptist Church, the first one, is 1839-1854, it burned down. And then the second one is 1854-1857, and it, it expanded. 
Colored Methodist Society. Bethel AME Church is now on St. Antoine and Warren. But they started in the area we know as Black Bottom. And they also were an organization fighting against slavery and part of the Underground Railroad. St. Matthew's Protestant Episcopal Church is one of the churches that comes out of Second Baptist. The first minister of St. Matthew's is the first minister of Second Baptist. He would leave Second Baptist and become the pastor of St. Saint, Saint Matthew's. Um, we went to Finney Barn site. The landing for ferry to Canada was at Second and Atwater. We didn't go there. The landing for the steamboat to Canada was at Griswater and Atwater. We almost are there. It's basically where the princess is. That was a steamboat that took people over to Canada. Uh, the landing for ferry to Canada that ran off in Atwater. That's that way. George Baptiste home, we went there. William Webb home, we went there. The first congregation of Church of Detroit used to be down here. It is now on Woodward and Forest. And they have an underground railroad experience in their basement. So if you ever visit that, you can, it's, a, it's a good sight to see. And this is one of the trails. The most important trail in the Underground Railroad going to Canada was this one. It's called the Michigan Central Trail. It's really an old Indian trail that black people followed. And now you know it as I-94. Mm -hmm. But Canada was racist. They didn't, they, they wasn't slavery, but it was still racist. So black people had to build self-sufficient communities where they had to produce all the things they needed for themselves. And so there's a number one. One's the Dawn Settlement, one is Transden. One of them is where Uncle Tom's cabin is. Josiah Henson makes it to, to Uncle Tom is based on a real person named Josiah Henson. And he makes it to Canada and basically sets up a self-sufficient community. He has a farm, there's a little school there. They're uh, uh, making things out of wood and selling them. So it's a self-sufficient community. This is what they had to do because they were uh, being discriminated against by people in Canada. So they had to create everything for themselves. Right. They had to be self-sufficient, grow their own food, produce stuff that they could sell, make money. You know, because you may not get a job, right. you may not get hired. So this is okay. what they did. So even in, even though they got free, that not like the, you know, yeah, first free, <laughs> right, so. right. More free, but so not. Porn Blackburn and Ruthie started a comp. That's how they made it. Had they had to depend on trying to go to work for somebody, they, we, their story would have been a lot different. Right. Yeah. But to the indigenous people, has always been here, right? That's right. So yeah, that's right. They making they making deals with the French and all that. Right. So that's when that French and Indian war mm, come that's about. Right. That's right. Treaties that's and all that. Belle Isle. So you see right. that what? point on Belle Isle, that part of it's called Point Something. They used to cross right over there. Yeah, there there, there are a number of people who know I don't know the spot. Uh -huh. Know the spot that some black people escaped to Belle Isle and then came from Belle Isle right, to it's, it's Canada. Point. It's yeah, I don't know where that spot is, but Kim Simmons does that tour. Uh, um, I don't know if she still does it, but she used to be the president of the Black Historic Sites Committee. Okay. And she now runs something called the Detroit River Project. And uh, I know she's been working on the book for some years. So that kind of, I know that's just kind of, she kind of put her tour to the back burner working on the book. But, um, she knows that spot. That that's not something I know about, but I do plan on talking to her so I can kind of get more information about it. You can see the Canada has their festival at the same time that Detroit has theirs, and then they do the fireworks, the international fireworks on both. Of them. Now, is it um true that you're working on a book, or was it a movie, or? Oh, it's a book. For me, it's a book. Yeah, it's called Black. <laughs> it's called Black Before. It's called Black Before Bankruptcy. Um, the the most important sites in the building of Black Detroit. So that's what it is. So it's not going to be like a chronolo chronological history starting from 1701 to 1974. It's going to be the particular sites, some of which we've seen today. Particular sites and what happened at those sites and who were the people involved at those particular important historic sites. And so it's a story of places and the people and events involved with those places. Okay. And so it'll so start. That sounds really similar to the tour. Yeah, it starts, but it's not going to be just underground railroad. Uh, That's the difference. Okay. It'll be, 
Yeah, yeah. Underground Railroad will be included, but so will the rebellions, the riots, so-called riots. So will the marches for civil rights, and so will so a lot of other stuff will be going will be in there besides just the Underground Railroad. Okay. But yeah, the Underground Railroad, the Nation of Islam found all of that will be in there. The Republic of New Africa, Malcolm X giving um, three major speeches in Detroit. Message to the Grassroots, Ballad of the Bullet, and the last message, which was done at Hart Plaza at Ford Auditorium, which no longer exists. But he gave that speech one week before he was assassinated. So I those kind of things were happening. Oh, he was an RNA, okay. Wow. Good so the shootout in New Bethel in 69 was a major they part of Detroit the, history. The place after my father pulled me out of it. Wow. Yes, right down Cadillac and Mac. Wow, they, they did have a place there. That's yes. right, they did. Well, I mean, I need mean, to talk to you. So we look uh -huh. <laughs> right. It was run by La Bamba. Yeah, that's right. By Luke, yeah, Choke by Lamunda. Yeah. So you have a chapter in his upcoming book. Provisional <laughs> government for the Republic of New Africa. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, that's the count. So it's gonna cover all the way up to 1974. So Coleman Young's election is the end of my book. That could be the beginning of another one, but that's the end of that one. So when, when should we look forward to it? You, you should be looking forward to it next year. Next year sometime? Yeah. Okay. You're going right. to put out on your next tour. Yes, I am. I yes, I am.